your bite-sized daily roundup of the biggest news from the world of film. This is The Daily Reel with Van Connor. Good morning. Today's Monday, April the 26th. Two years to the day since Avengers Endgame opened in cinemas, the day Ice Cube's Friday came out in 1995, and Pain and Gain was released in 2013. It's birthday to Channing Tatum, Jordana Brewster, Kevin James, and Jet Li, and it's the day this was the film news. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier star Anthony Mackie is set to lead Captain America 4 as the titular star-spangled man with a plan. Malcolm Spellman, showrunner and head writer on the Disney Plus show, will co-write the script with fellow series scribe Darlin Musson. The previous trilogy of Captain America movies were fronted by Chris Evans' Steve Rogers, whose final fate at the end of 2019's Avengers Endgame saw the character living out his days in the past with old flame Peggy Carter. Whether or not an older version of Evans' character will reappear in some capacity remains to be seen, but it seems fairly unlikely given that the Knives Out star was pretty clear and open about having now left the role behind. As such, all eyes turn to Mackie's Sam Wilson. Previously Cap's partner, the mechanically winged Falcon, the character debuted a new super suit as Captain America's successor in last week's season finale, accepting the mantle and shield to unanimous fan approval. No production date was given for Captain America 4, and Marvel Studios have remained characteristically secretive on exactly when we can expect to see the flick. But with the MCU presently in Phase 4 of the franchise and the schedule fully booked for the next two years, the earliest would be 2023. This isn't about easy decisions, Senator. You just don't understand. I'm a black man carrying the stars and stripes. What don't I understand? Netflix is reportedly finalizing a deal centered around the iconic rock band KISS. The feature, which will be entitled Shout It Out Loud, will tell the story of Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley first meeting as kids in New York, and going on to form the flamboyant band with Ace Frehley and Peter Criss. Simmons and Stanley will also act as producers on the film. The band's stadium-filling anthems will be, as expected, a central hook of the project, though whether or not the feature will be an out-and-out musical is currently unclear. Maleficent Mistress of Evil Helmet Joaquin Ronning will direct, from a script by Ole Sanders, who adapted a draft by William Blake Heron. Once the deal is complete, it's understood that Shouted Out Loud will be fast-tracked into production, so expect casting announcements shortly. You know, your audience really looks appetizing. Oh, really? Are you a bat? Yes. <laughs> Actually, what I am is evil incarnate. And some of those cheeks and necks look really good. <laughs> And finally, the Oscars were last night, and the big winner was undeniably and as expected Nomadland, which took home the title of Best Picture, saw Chloe Zhao become the first woman of colour and only the second woman ever to win the Best Directing Oscar, and for a cherry on top landed Frances McDormand her third Academy Award for Best Actress. McDormand's award puts her in second place for most wins in the category, behind only four-time winner Catherine Hepburn. Bit of an aside here, McDormand actually now ties with Meryl Streep, who also has three wins. However, Streep's only actually won two for lead roles, and won the other one for Best Supporting Actress in Kramer vs. Kramer, as opposed to three straight Best Actress pulls of McDormand, and oh look, I've gone cross-eyed. Elsewhere, Sound of Metal, The Father, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Soul, Mank, and Judas and the Black Messiah took home two wins each, while Promising Young Woman, Another Round, My Octopus Teacher, and Minari took home a statue apiece. Yoo New Young became the first ever Korean to win an acting award as she earned Best Actress in a Supporting Role for her role in Minari, while Daniel Kaluuya earned Best Supporting Actor for his work on Judas and the Black Messiah. The undeniable surprise of the night, however, was the last-minute resurgence for Florian Zeller's The Father, taking home Best Adapted Screenplay, widely expected to have gone to Chloe Zhao's Nomadland, as well as Best Actor for Sir Anthony Hopkins. It makes for Hopkins a second Best Actor victory, having previously won in 1992 for his role as Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs. But he has also been nominated for The Remains of the Day in Nixon, as well as for Best Supporting Actor with The Two Popes and Armistad. This second win, though, makes him the oldest ever Oscar winner still acting, an honor previously held by the late Christopher Plummer, who was 82 when he won for Beginners in 2011. 
The 93rd Academy Awards also saw Glenn Close doing the butt. Do you know the dance, though? Do you know how to do the butt? Quest, turn it up. Come on, let's see it. Let me see you do the butt. Let's see it. Elizabeth Lowe's canine love letter Stray is released on DVD and Blu-ray today, while 2012's Best Picture winner The Artist arrives on Amazon Prime, Shudder are adding In Search of Darkness Part 2 and Wakewood, Jacques Beck's Touche Paz O'Greeby comes to Mubi, and Netflix are adding the South African comedy Slay. Cinematic offerings on Freeview include Blackwater and Scanners on the Horror Channel, Bullet and Assassins on ITV4, Rat Race in the Box on Sony Movies, A Fistful of Dollars and the Ballad of Lefty Brown are on the Paramount Network, Film 4 are showing The Martian, Independence Day Resurgence and Ray and Liz, and The Final Conflict Omen 3 is on Talking Pictures TV. While the Sky Cinema and Now TV premiere for today is the 80-set horror romp The Call. That was the Daily Reel for Monday the 26th of April. Keep it cinematic and we'll see you tomorrow. The Daily Reel is a Candy Saw production presented by Van Connor and written by Calvin Prickett. All information is correct at the time of writing and source links are in the description for each episode. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe on all good podcast platforms or ask Alexa to install the Daily Reel skill for your morning flash briefing. Follow the show on social at Daily Reel Pod and we'll be back every weekday. Until then, keep it cinematic. Cinematic.